Zero divided by any non-zero number equals zero. But dividing any number by zero does not equal zero, it equals undefined. It just can't be done. So what's going on here? Why can we divide zero by n, but we can't divide n by zero? To answer this, we need to take a look at what division as a function represents. Division is asking us the question, if we have a certain number of things, and we split them into groups which each contain a certain number of each, how many groups do we have? The equation is the total number divided by the total number in each group equals the number of groups we have. This way of seeing division is what's called quotation division. It's actually possible to flip these two, which gives us the partition method of seeing division. Now mathematically, there's no difference between these. The numbers will always end up the same. So to keep things simple, I will be using quotation for this explanation, and then I can explain partition at the very end. To make things a little more concrete, let's have our groups be plates and our things be cherries. The total cherries we have divided by the number of cherries on each plate equals the number of plates. Now the equation 10 divided by five equals two is saying that if we have 10 cherries and we put five of them on each plate, then we must have two plates. Simple enough. Likewise, the equation 10 divided by two equals five is saying that we have 10 cherries and we put two on each plate, then we'll have five plates. But what does dividing by fractions or decimals mean? 10 divided by 0.5 equals 20. Well, this is saying that if we cut each of the cherries in half and we put one of those on each plate, we will have a total of 20 plates. Simple. Going the other way, 10 divided by 20 equals 0.5. This is because if we have 10 cherries and we want 20 of them on each plate, how many plates are we able to fill up? Well, just half of one. We would have needed 20 cherries to even fill up a single plate with our desired 20 cherries per plate. We only have 10, so we can get it halfway there, 0.5. So now let's look at what zero divided by another number means. The equation zero divided by five equals zero. It's saying that if we have zero cherries and we want to put five on each plate, how many plates will we have with cherries on them? Well, just like with the last example, we can't even fill one up and we can't fill it halfway or a tenth of the way or a millionth of the way. We can't even put any fraction of our desired five cherries on even one single plate. So we have zero plates. Not even such a fraction of a plate with our desired five cherries. The answer is zero. Then what's the problem with dividing by zero? Well, let's run it through our example. The equation 10 divided by zero is asking us that if we have 10 cherries and we want to evenly split them up to end up with zero cherries on each plate, how many plates do we end up with? It can't be answered because it can't be done. The answer is not zero, because how exactly do you split 10 cherries into zero equal groups? Even if we cut each cherry into billions and trillions of little tiny pieces, then we just have billions or trillions of plates, each with a tiny fraction of a cherry on them. And if we put all 10 cherries on one plate, we still have one plate or one group. How can you take something that exists and then make it not exist by dividing it? You can't. Let's look at this from another perspective, by starting in the middle. The equation zero divided by five equals zero implies that if we have five cherries on each plate and we have zero plates, then, oh, we must have a total of zero cherries. Whereas 10 divided by zero equals zero implies that if we have zero cherries on each plate and we have zero plates, then we somehow have 10 cherries. This is absurd. You can easily start with zero cherries and split them up into zero groups which each contain five cherries. You cannot start with 10 cherries and then split them into any number of groups which contain zero cherries. How many plates of five cherries do we need to have a total of zero cherries? Zero. How many plates of zero cherries do we need to get 10 cherries? There's no answer. What about infinity? No, even if we have infinity plates, if each one of them has zero cherries, we have zero cherries. And likewise, if each plate were to have infinity cherries on it, but we have 
zero of those plates, we have zero cherries. The reason that this happens is that division is just the inverse of multiplication. We simply flip the equation around and swap the equal sign with the function. Zero divided by five equals zero when inversed is zero times five equals zero. That's perfectly fine. Zero plates, five cherries on each, gives us a total of zero cherries. 10 divided by zero equals zero, inversed, says that zero times zero equals 10, or zero plates with zero cherries on each gives us a total of 10 cherries. Absurd. So what times zero equals 10? What if we multiplied it by infinity? No, as stated earlier, infinity times zero still equals zero. There is simply no possible way to put any number here that makes this possible. To divide 10 by zero is to imply that some number when multiplied by zero equals 10, when no such number can ever exist. Now, as I said at the start, the method of seeing division as the total things divided by the number in each group equals number of groups is what's called quotition division. Partition is total things divided into amount of groups equals how many things will be in each group. Mathematically, these two things are exactly the same. The numbers themselves don't care what they're representing. They will always do the same thing. But for our example, this kind of does matter. Does this affect our explanation for why dividing zero does work, but dividing by zero doesn't? No, it doesn't change anything, because what stays the same is this first number, which in both cases represents how many things we start with. And that's the key here. We can start with zero things and put five of them into each group, ending up with zero groups, or we can start with zero things and put them into five equal groups with zero in each. What we cannot do is start with 10 things and put zero in each group, no matter how many groups we have, nor can we start with 10 things and equally divide them into zero groups, no matter how few are in each group.